can't help it ladies and gentlemen it's taking over (laughs) the music (laughs) is in my soul (laughs) that's what i was trying to think of (laughs) hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the true crime banter podcast and as our intro song was playing i believe i say sit back relax and enjoy the episode Mm -hmm. and we're not recording video for this episode because i am in the ultimate sit back and relaxed (laughs) position i guess is what i'm thinking um we are recording this on our big comfy couch just like that curly haired person that did the time thing back in the day do you know what i'm talking about uh yeah big comfy couch okay Okay, yeah yeah, the fucking show i'm not losing my mind no me and my sister joey talk about that all the time yeah and how she did like the weird like it's one o'clock two o'clock yeah stretch routine that that, show was like a weird fever dream that like i (laughs) you forgot it ever existed It's, like, drug-induced a little bit. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, sometimes I think it never really happened. And then I'm, like, sometimes I see clips. I'm, like, no, it did. And there's, like, weird parts of it I remember that I'm, like, who would put that in a show? (laughs) But I loved it. I don't know. Well, you know, we grew up in a a weird time. It's true. That is for sure. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, (laughs) hello, everybody. And as... I was just saying, we are on our big comfy couch. No video episode for the YouTube viewers today, but there will be an audio uh, episode uploaded. And today's episode, we got a sponsor, ladies and gentlemen. No, we don't. No, we don't. I don't know what he's doing. Brought to you by Crown Royal (laughs) Whiskey uh, Lemonade. Because I am, (laughs) once again, sat back and relaxed. I am just... Ready? Hey, if they want to sponsor, if they want to. For real, I know they got the money. Anyways, uh, (laughs) everyone, welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, It's been a couple weeks since we did an actual case. Yeah. And today, you will be taking the stronghold, as I've once uh, exclaimed. He's been drinking, everyone. (laughs) Please excuse us. (laughs) Anyway, I'm actually just happy because uh, we're back recording again. Yeah, and you don't have to do anything. I love it. Must be nice. This is amazing. I got COVID, I swear. (laughs) No, this is a kind of a really... It's super, super sad, but also like kind of graphic and fucked up. So okay. I'll put what? a little warning like as I start to tell the story, but yeah, what yeah. what is the case? Do you want to tell? Do you want to no, say I'm not what gonna it is? tell it. It might be something that people know, but this was pretty big back in like the like two thousand and fourteen to sixteen kind of time. It was one of those things where like, Nobody could believe this was even fucking happening. It was one of those unbelievable things that you're like, how could somebody get get away with this for okay. so long kind of thing? And it's pretty gross. It's pretty sensitive of a topic. So like I said, I'll give a warning. But this is one of those things where I feel like I have to cover it and I haven't seen it a ton. Right. So yeah, like I said, pretty gross, but... Anyway, cool. okay. Well, I want to hear. We get into it, yeah, I want to hear your banta. We got some bit of banta <laughs> for today, <laughs> and which is, I think you're excited because we were talking, we were having a, I guess, a regular conversation before this, and uh, I said, you know what, this is weird because it ties into my bit of banter for today. Which this has happened a few times where yeah. I just randomly start talking about something. You're like, whoa, that's it gets what I was weird. Talk I know, about later. and there's been times where your bit of banter exactly ties into the case I'm presenting to which you. Which is so, so weird. Here's my bit of banter for, I guess, this episode. And uh, recently, I've been exploring a new version of podcasts. And you brought it up earlier today because you were talking about some, I guess, TV interviews about a couple people that uh, actually host a podcast like this, yeah. which was Jenna Fisher and April, April. Tinsley, I believe, is Kinsley. Angela 
or Kins, one of the two. I think April Tinsley is like a missing child, wasn't it? You might be right. Anyway, that's one of the anyway. two. But uh, they host a podcast. Is it the Office of Ladies or the Office? Yeah, Gals? the Office Ladies. Okay, yeah. so yeah, it's a new, not not a new, because they've been doing that for I want to say a couple years now since yeah. like the beginning of COVID, and uh, it's a it's a version of a podcast where basically actors actresses um they they go back and give you kind of like a little behind the scenes look of tv yeah. shows or also uh, i just confirmed april tinsley is a missing child okay and so who is april kinsey is it april i think it's kinsey all right as you as you go into that i have i actually started listening to another ep- or podcast oh her name is angela kinsey Oh, Angela. Her Kinsey. name's actually okay. Angela from okay. the show Angela, right. yeah. I was going to, anyways, anyways. Sorry, I sorry. don't want to sidetrack too far. So we've, I've, I guess I, have been listening to a podcast very similar where it is people who go back and go over old TV show episodes one by one, and it's called Pod Meets World because the cast of Boy Meets World has started doing this. Shut up. And I've really been enjoying it. So they Shut only have like the fuck up. They up- upload two episodes a week. Wait, how do they even remember? They were oh, like ten when crazy. this show came out. It's crazy how much they remember. Well, and so it is it is Sean and Topanga Sean everyone Will. Uh, Will Friedle, which is Eric, the older yeah. brother. So those okay, three he was host cute the podcast. Too, but Sean was my guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I hope so. I don't, I don't know you what that do. means. I don't know. But because he was um, your guy too. <laughs> <laughs> they've they've done a really good job, and it's crazy how much they remember because it's been thirty years since. I had it no first idea aired. this was a thing. I'm so excited. Yeah, they've they've covered four episodes, I believe, so far. The first four episodes of the show. But in between each episode, they, they'll interview um, another actor that was involved with the show. So okay. it's really cool to get like a behind the scenes look. Wait a second. Okay, so Topanga, is she on it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, oh my God, I feel so dumb. So I saw a TikTok of her like talking about her interviewing Mr. Feeney. Yeah. So well, it must uh, have been for the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I just Bill figured Daniels. it was her own thing she was doing. Yeah. No, <gasps> it, it was really cool. And it was Mr. Feeney and with his wife. And he's 300 like years 90s. old. Yeah, yeah. They're so old. And I didn't know he was like, I mean, I, I knew he was a really good actor, but he was like, he won like Emmys and shit. Yeah. I didn't so. even know he was still alive until that TikTok came up. I'm yeah. like, I th- really thought he died forever ago because he was old in that show. So plot twist. Okay. Is that... <laughs> Because I've listened to The Office Ladies back when it first came out during like I have not heard a single stuff. episode, so good I for have, you. I only watch or listen to the first few episodes because I'm a big Office fan, as yeah. a lot of people are. Uh, but because I've listened to that, and now I've listened to Pod Meets World, I got a suggestion for another podcast. And I don't even remember... Big Comfy Couch. I don't remember <laughs> what it's called. <laughs> what? But it is... Uh, is it back to the beginning? I'm thinking it might be that. Okay. And it is Stephen something and Kristen Cavallari? Cavallari? Oh. From, from Laguna Beach. And they are doing the exact same thing. What? And going back episode by and episode. And you listen to it. I've listened. They've only, they got like three episodes. And, and I've listened to two of them. Good? And they're only like half hour ish long okay and it is i don't want to say good one first off i didn't realize it's been 18 years since laguna beach first aired that so feels they're weird. like almost 40 yes or they are 40 yeah uh i guess mid-30s they're probably 36 37 because they were in high school 20 years oh were they yeah i thought they were out of high school yeah no they were in high school it was like oh. their senior years of high school or something still though but anyway they're they're also going back and talking about how like mtv would do these things called wild lines and like uh other type of i can't remember what the other phrase was for for the wild lines are things that they said at some point but then mtv edits it them into the show to make it seem like they're saying it right oh, okay now. Like, which is just like, i can't reality. wait for her to get out of here which yeah. is just reality tv in general right yeah but I don't know. Maybe because I was like young at the time, it seemed more realistic than reality. Oh TV. yeah, we had no. And then idea they back also then. do do things where they have to actually have these people come back and reshoot scene, not reshoot scenes, but 
shoot scenes that then set up what they're trying to do in the show. Okay. And I actually like this because I, when I watch YouTube videos, movies, when it, any TV show that we're watching, I am really interested in the uh, production of things. Like, yeah, we, we watch a lot of like shitty reality TV. We do. And I'm always like, that you definitely can tell like the producer set this up. Yeah. Or like, um, you, it's crazy to think that somebody is right there holding a camera when all of this is going on. And yeah. You forget that there's also a couple extra people saying my boom exactly. microphone and things like yeah. that. So um, it's been really interesting. Huh. Like I've really found enjoyment in it. And I wanted to know, I don't know, is there any show or like a YouTube channel or TV movie, something that you would like to know uh, the behind the scenes of it? I feel like movies, Frasier. not so much. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Frasier yeah. maybe Seinfeld. Oh, for sure. Just because I, I like the older stuff. Yeah. I would honestly probably say Golden Girls too, but they're all dead, so that doesn't really true. help anything. Yes. That's R.I.P. You know. Yeah. To it would be really interesting soon, to hear but, yeah. Kelsey Grammer talk about. Yeah, and there's been interviews with them, but I think yeah. in podcast form when everyone's relaxed and I don't know. I mean, SNL too. I think would be really fun if maybe like from certain iconic. Eras iconic skits yeah everyone happened to get back you know but there's obviously certain people that aren't around anymore mm -hmm. um that can't or maybe there's just people that just don't want to do it i don't know but yeah i would say probably fraser i mean you know i'm that's my jam and yeah. seinfeld and all yeah, that i'm with that a lot like yeah it, it is it's cool but, or i guess going back to like pod meets world yeah they they talk about how they're like 12 years old yeah and sean writer's Drunk, I think is his actual name. He's talking about how uh, Eric, he was like, dude, you were like my hero. You had this like Celica with a subwoofer <laughs> in it. Shut and, up. And like, that's what they're talking about. Back like, in the day. Yeah. And Eric's always talking about how like he was like, oh man, during these scenes, I was, I could tell I'm just a robot because I didn't know how to act. Yeah. It was like, I was just doing whatever they told me and I didn't know right. how to get a feel. And, and I was they like, both had that swooshy hair mm -hmm. with the middle and, part. And Sean had to actually have his hair like straightened for that. Oh, is and he so, normally a curly boy? I I think so. I mean, in the later seasons, it's more like messy-ish, I suppose. But they always make fun of how like Sean's always like oh, grabbing yeah. his hair. Oh, yeah. But they said because he, was he wasn't original, used to having his hair down yeah. in his eyes. So that's He's why he was always touching the original J. Biebs, I think. I, you know? I think so. Heart I, throbs. Well, maybe like hair. Hansen. What? Maybe, like a, the band Hanson. You know what? Who's no. that? Yeah, we've we've talked about this before. You know, what? we're oh, not. We're, okay, we'll guys. talk about it some other segue time. Segue on a segue. Anyways, <laughs> on a segue, we're gonna segue <laughs> to our sponsor today. No, which is Tito Crown Royal. Mojito. <laughs> <I can't>. Mojito. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I just I thought that was wow. You know, I could see Frazier. They're a little older now, obviously, and I think that would be fun. And John Mulaney, the guy who played the dad. The, well, yeah yeah the dead he's not around anymore no. so that would really that would be sad because he's a huge part of the show but i think still even with daphne and niles and mm -hmm. you know i think those three solid even the yeah, dogs and not the original dog maris who never, <laughs> never saw never showed yeah. Up. yeah but seinfeld i think would be good that would be i'm pretty sure everyone's still around on that one too. yeah yeah and there's a lot of characters in that show there's that so many be, seasons too there's got to be an endless so amount behind of scenes behind jokes. the scenes yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well uh cool. yeah that's that's my bit of banter that's been my new uh podcast I like it. Um, now i have something to listen to because i have a listening. long drive tomorrow so that's good Ooh, look at you would you say it was called back to the beginning or something that's the laguna beach one. Oh shit uh pod meets world pod meets world yes. all right yeah it's pretty good good so i suggest <gasps> it to everybody wait what is going on? I just remember the guy who plays Corey got a nose job. Ben Savage did? Yeah. Really? You have to look him up. I just fucking forgot about that. I'm like, wait, why didn't you mention Corey? Right. So he's he hasn't been involved yet. And the big the crazy thing is that this entire show was developed to be around Ben Savage because his brother was on uh like younger I, Wonder Years or something like sure, that. Yeah. But uh, no. Yeah, so they haven't had His him nose on the is show. All pointy. Okay, all right. Remember well, how he had had a rounded nose? Yeah. Yeah, like. Okay, well, can you kind of see it. Um. Okay, I see that. Is that the new nose? Yeah, that's the new nose, bro. Well, 
I mean, he doesn't look bad. No, because look at the original. And he is like my See number the original? one. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Because I remember seeing him and being like, is this prosthetics? Okay. Like, there's no way. Well. But then you see that, and you're like. Oh, as she slams sorry, the guys. laptop. It's fine. The show's fucked anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, good for him. He looks good, I still say. I mean, he was my number one growing up, so. Anyway. <laughs> segue. Anyways, segue. Uh, I think you all here are, <laughs> you are all here for true crime. Yeah. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Here's me giving a warning now that this does deal with graphic descriptions of violence against young, young children. It's 2014 in Pleasant Grove, Utah, when Darren West had just returned home after serving a pretty lengthy prison sentence for federal drug charges. The home he was returning to was the home he used to share with his ex-wife, 39-year-old Megan Huntsman. In the past few years, the home had only been occupied by his three children and his sister, the children's aunt. Sounds kind of odd, right? Well, there's a reason for that. See, Megan and Darren had quite a history, and I think it's important that we share that now before we hear about the terrible things that unfolded in their life. Let's start with Megan. When Megan was growing up, she was known to be extremely private. Friends and family all say this about her, that growing up she was painfully shy, and even the people closest to her didn't know much about her beyond a surface-level relationship. She met her future husband, Darren, in high school, and they hit it off. Darren was a couple years older and was described as a loner bad boy. Almost immediately after Megan graduated high school, Darren proposed to Megan and thus began the start of their adulthood romance. But what nobody knew, even Darren, was that Megan was secretly pregnant. Like I said, Megan was very private. She was pretty introverted and usually stayed home, so maybe that plays into the fact that she was able to keep this pregnancy a secret for nine months. That's right, the entire pregnancy was under wraps. Nobody knew? Nobody knew. Damn. This is just the tip of the iceberg. She was a matter of weeks away from giving birth when she finally decided to tell Darren. She ended up giving birth to this baby by herself at home. After giving birth to their daughter, Megan and Darren move into a house that actually belonged to Darren's parents and was a wedding gift for the both of them, the before-mentioned house at the beginning of the story. While Darren was working in construction, Megan found work as a cleaner and a babysitter to help make ends meet. At this point, they are a normal, hard-working family of three just trying to make it, but... Almost immediately after her first baby, Megan gets pregnant again. And again, tells no one. Except this time, even Darren didn't know. And no, she didn't tell him weeks away from birth, she just didn't tell him at all. 
She birthed the baby alone and let him know when he got home from work that day. I'm lost already. <laughs> Your I'm face. So... You guys can't see this right now, but I am turned away from him and I am occasionally looking back and the faces just keep getting more and what more perplexed. What the fuck is going on? This is just, hold on. It she's gets way given, worse. She's given two births so far. Yes. That nobody's known about. Yes. And one of them occurred when they were living together in their own house that was gifted to them. And she, ha, How she just showed up with another child. And he's just like, yep. Sup? Yep, pretty okay. much. All right. All right. I, continue. Some please. questions will I be need, answered. I need these questions <laughs> okay. answered. So my next paragraph starts off with, now you might be wondering, how could a husband not know about two fucking pregnancies when they live together full time? Agreed. Not even just not know, but not notice anything for nine whole months each time. Well, what a lot of people didn't know and what comes out later is that Darren had actually been pretty deep into a drug habit this entire time. He was interviewed later about all this and he admits that he was so high for this whole period of time. He himself is not surprised that he didn't notice anything at all. He said he didn't notice anything about anything for years. When their daughters were about two and three, this is when the drug use really amped up. Darren had always dabbled in kind of all sorts of drugs, but this is when Megan gets involved and she started using meth, thought to have been given to her by Darren. Before they knew it, the young couple was spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars a day on this habit. As what happens with most people whose lives have been taken over by drugs, Darren and Megan eventually lost their jobs due to being unreliable and poor work quality. Trying to problem solve about their money issues, this is when Darren gets the brilliant idea to not only deal meth, but to manufacture it as well. Along with their two daughters being neglected and taking a backseat to their addiction, Megan's mental health starts spiraling as it usually does with drug use. Issues such as anxiety and psychosis have taken over, and on top of that, she has physically aged quite a bit, losing hair and teeth. Being in her early 20s, Megan now resembles someone in their 40s or 50s. I couldn't find much about what Darren looks like, but I can't imagine he was too cute at this point either. I am imagining somebody who's watched one too many episodes of Breaking Bad. Yes. And he has shaved his head now. He did have a shaved head. Grown a mustache. He did have facial hair and a shaved head. He's, I, it's kind of weird you're no, saying no, this. No, you know what? Continue. I don't want to give away the rest of the story. <laughs> I mean, how many seasons of it are there? I don't know. Quite a bit, but... It's now 1996, and Megan finds herself pregnant yet again. Do I want to ask if Hold Darren on. knows? Hold on. And you guessed it. She keeps this one a secret, too. The only difference this time is that Megan was addicted to drugs and had been using meth her entire pregnancy. Megan gave birth to this baby completely alone in her bathroom upstairs, except this time, she didn't want to keep it. What's going through her mind? Adoption? Foster home? Oh no, much worse. Let's jump back to present day, when Darren is at his old home going through some things left in his garage. He wanted to pack up the rest of his stuff and get on with his life, so he started in a corner of garage that held Christmas decorations. He saw a box that looked kind of weird. Oh my God. I think it's hitting me. It was a pretty small box, oh. but it was wrapped in duct tape, like a weird amount of duct tape. He starts cutting the tape to open it, and once the lid is off, he's hit with the worst smell you can imagine. <sighs> One of those smells that people who have smelled it say they will never forget. He starts to unwrap plastic bags placed inside of more plastic bags inside of more plastic bags. Oh my God. Until he gets to the bottom where there's towels. The towel laid in a mess 
of what once was the body of a baby. That's right. After Megan gave birth to that baby all alone in her bathroom, she decided her only option was to get rid of the baby permanently. She later says she took her two thumbs and just pressed on the baby's neck until it stopped breathing. Darren immediately calls the cops. He is in complete shock about what he just found, but he knows he needs the authorities here. After the 911 call is made, Darren calls Megan because what the fuck, you know? Yeah. He wants some answers, if she has any at all about what the hell happened. For all he knows, she either has the answers or she doesn't know what's going on either. When Megan gets the call and gets confronted about the discovery, she completely breaks down and confesses to Darren that years ago she had a stillborn birth that she had kept secret. And out of panic, she wrapped the baby up and hid it away instead of telling anyone. At the time of the discovery, Megan is living with her boyfriend, Jimmy, who she has been dating for years at this point. She completely broke down to Jimmy and told him about the baby and how the cops are going to come and arrest her and that she wants to end her life. She asked Jimmy to give her a gun and thankfully he says no. Jimmy was actually the reason that Megan wasn't living at the house anymore. When Darren was sent off to prison years ago, Darren's parents said that the girls and Megan could keep living there as long as Megan stayed faithful to Darren during his prison sentence. Well, that lasted a couple years until Darren's parents found out about Megan's secret boyfriend, Jimmy. They allowed the kids to stay in the home. I think they probably saw no point in punishing the children for Megan's mistakes. Right. But Megan had to go. This is when Darren's sister moved in to take care of the girls. After Megan was denied a gun, right, during this whole thing, she basically sat and waited for the inevitable police visit. Megan was taken downtown for an interview where she immediately cracked. I'm sure she saw no point in trying to hide anything or keeping secrets from anyone. Megan explained it all starting with that first baby, born after her second daughter during the drug-addicted era, where she decided she just couldn't be a mom again. It wasn't in the cards. She already had enough going on in her life, what with raising her two kids and barely making ends meet, all while being jobless and dealing with mental health issues and, you know, being addicted to drugs and having a husband addicted to drugs. Yeah, that's kind of an issue. Yep. The last thing she needed was another mouth to feed. And instead of coming clean or finding another solution, she made a disgusting choice. Unfortunately, this would become a horrific pattern of Megan's. You see, she not only did this one time, investigators found six more boxes. All containing the the remains of what once were newborns. All discarded by the hands of Megan. And you guessed it. Every single one of these seven babies was kept secret. Jesus Christ. Nobody ever knew. Megan ended up having one more child after her second daughter. Another daughter, actually. In her interview with police, she claims that she actually had to keep this one because people noticed that she was pregnant this one time. The one and only time. And she couldn't get rid of it because too many people had found out at that point. And there's no doubt in anybody's mind that this child would have been another victim if nobody would have noticed the signs of pregnancy. Police listened to this terrible story for hours on end. And as Megan explains, she repeats a type of routine for each of these secret births. She would find out she's pregnant, carry out the pregnancy in secret, which we find out later she was able to do successfully because she was always known to wear extremely baggy clothing Plus, being isolated with the partner, who's also addicted to drugs. When the time of the birth was near, she would lock herself in the upstairs bathroom. Sometimes, even when people were home, we find out a couple of these pregnancies, people were hanging out downstairs the entire time. Wow. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Right? There's so many thoughts going on in my head right now. Yep. And she would deliver the baby in private and somehow quietly... 
She then applied pressure to the baby's throat each time, Jesus. waiting for it to stop breathing, and then followed this up with the disposing of it by hiding it in a box, wrapped in towels, garbage bags, and now we know wrapped in a ton of duct tape. Megan repeated this seven times over a span of 10 years. And she might have gotten away with it too, but for some reason she decided to just leave the boxes at the home instead of disposing of them. Which, thankfully, right? Yeah, for real. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure what she thought was going to happen. Perhaps it was kind of a out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. I don't know. I That baffles me. Because, especially over 10 years, there's so many opportunities for her to be like, okay, I'm just going to like throw it in the garbage or something right like, yeah yeah which is sounds terrible, terrible but there are other but options. but if you're trying to get away with exactly a murder pretty much you're keeping it at the place that people would discover it yeah yeah and just hoping no one ever opens those boxes right i guess i but i guess when you're in a house right full of children most children don't like cut open boxes no but at some and, point and i don't think you if think? your husband's super high all the time i don't know Somewhat makes yeah. sense, somewhat doesn't. I don't know. In her interview, Megan explains that one of the babies was actually a stillbirth, just as she had told Darren on the phone. The coroner was able to confirm this somehow. So, technically, I guess she murdered six babies instead of seven. Megan even said that she thought there should have been eight or nine bodies found. That, that's good. That makes it better. But... She admits her memory was really bad during this period due to drugs. And I'm sure there's like some kind of trauma thing involving the mind where she blocks it out. Yeah, or, you I'm know. sure. But when she was interviewed, she was like, wait, you only found seven? She was like, I'm pretty sure there was more. But yeah, they were like, no, we only found seven. But and who over knows? a 10 year span, who you can knows? only get pregnant so often. Right. Yeah. But seven is still quite a bit for 10 years, right? Yeah, like, I'd say. Yeah. When the story broke, of course, everyone who knew Megan was absolutely floored and horrified, but also really baffled about how someone could hide seven pregnancies for that long. And I'm sure they were each shocked about how they didn't notice it either. Not even just her getting away with it, but wait, how didn't the I fact, see it? Yeah. I was at her home and stuff like Hung that, you know? With her, saw yeah. Her, yeah. Right. And after this broke, neighbors of Darren and Megan actually said that one time they suspected that she might have been pregnant. But since they never saw a baby following this period, they just assumed that maybe she had just gained a little bit of weight yeah. and then maybe lost it later. It also came out that even throughout his drug and fueled years with Megan, there was one or two instances that Darren thought that she may have been pregnant. But he asked her about it and Megan said that she was, but then miscarried. Shocker. And then I said in here, I said, I'm guessing that due to drugs and just him being an idiot, and I'm not trying to like sound sexist, but there are a lot of men who are ignorant to how these things work, the female autonomy, you know? Right. You don't just like, miscarry and then move Yeah. On. But I, I could see a really, really, really stupid dude and also like somebody who lacks common sense. That's what I mean. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I would think we're. Like, she was big enough that the baby was almost full term, and then that's when he noticed it, and then it was just gone one day. Like, common sense would be like, where did it go? It doesn't just, like, yeah. evaporate up inside you. Like, it has to go somewhere. So if it came out of you, right, and you miscarried, I would be like, where did you do this at? Did right. you go to the hospital? I mean, there's, like, that's one of many questions that right. arise in yeah. this situation. Because, like... You're talking about just the two miscarriages that he supposedly knew about and yeah. it happened, And right? never followed up on. But yeah. if if he's not um, aware enough or capable to know that she's pregnant ever, yeah. like, even what you're talking about, you yeah. know, if, if the first thing, I mean, obviously, many things come to mind, but it's like, how does nobody know she's pregnant? Well... Like, like you I said, mean, what I people, said, if, if they wear clothing, baggy clothes, I get that. She never left the house. And I get that. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I, I can see, I, 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 get, I can't see actually um, how she would get away with this. But 
yeah, to to think kind of along the lines of what you're going towards, where you're pregnant one day, like you know she's pregnant, and then all of a sudden, right. quote unquote, miscarry and. And they said that she was normal? a pretty thin woman, so she was never really that big. So sometimes when women are smaller, their pregnancies like she's. Well, you I certainly guess heard that of, bump is not that big yeah, on a smaller woman. Not always, but you, you certainly heard of situations where women didn't even know they were pregnant, right? And then they go right. into uh, yeah, labor. that happened to a friend of mine actually. And so, yeah. yeah, for sure, like there's there's women out there, and this is one of the things that was going through my head. There's so many things about this story that uh, women and I guess couples all over would love to have obviously a child yeah the ability to give birth right to to be able to be pregnant and nobody notice right like i'm not sure if i'm not a woman obviously yeah but i'm i know that's a thing where it's like you want to look good even when oh you're pregnant, yeah yeah right? yeah there's some people who don't care but there's women that are like oh i'm barely showing yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're just like yeah, yeah. Ooh, oh accidentally but also <laughs> i know i need you to comment on the fact that i'm barely showing yeah my. yeah everyone's different yeah and then three the ability to give birth alone on your own right i'm like people so, hate giving birth of course you know <laughs> so this was something that actually came up in one of the videos i watched for this was the girl that was doing this youtube video she was kind of like okay so giving birth at home by yourself not impossible clearly right if that's what she did seven fucking times but the fact that you were able to go through an entire pregnancy seven times first like you said nobody noticed not even people living with her. But then also, every single one of those pregnancies just went smooth. You had no complications at right, home. Right. Like, what are the odds of that? But complications in the sense of she's not in danger as the mother? No, but I mean, like, yeah, like blood loss or like right. you just, yeah, yeah. there's even just a normal pregnancy has usually has something. It doesn't need to be like life threatening, but usually there's something. That yeah, goes on, I whether mean, you're dehydrated and they need to fucking give you a bag or like there's just always something that usually happens. It's rare that you just give birth and there's no issues like epidural things like people have a, weird reactions to epidurals. Like there's always something. Sometimes your heart rate drops too low or there's always something. Yeah. And the it, fact that this happened seven times in a bathroom and nothing, and ever, nothing ever happened. Well, that that's where, you know, the question of were drugs how often were drugs involved when she's going into birth? Okay, so unquote, this actually labor. comes up later. So let me jump back into that then. Okay. So um, something else that came out during this interview was a little fun fact about Darren's arrest. This is we're just going to jump back to this real quick and yeah. then we'll get to your thing. Oh, no, you're good. Um, was that when he was landed in prison, this original reason he was there, right? The DEA had actually been watching him for a while. And on the day of his arrest... A raid had been issued, and during this raid, when they tore the home apart, nobody found the babies. You would think seven boxes wrapped in duct tape would look a little suspicious to the DEA, but no. Yeah, nobody ever for opened a anything. Meth house. Yeah, so that was something that came up, and I'm sure people Oops. had questions about how we're conducting these raids. But maybe they found enough of they were like, there's a shit ton of meth yeah. in the living room. Maybe I don't need to tear apart your garage. I don't know. After Darren's arrest, Megan was no longer surrounded by meth every day or negative influence. Besides drinking, she ended up actually weaning herself off of drugs and went on to lead a fairly normal life. Fairly. Yes. Until she met Jimmy and ended up getting kicked out. And you know the rest. I've already explained this. Her life with Jimmy was actually pretty good, according to her friends and family, and they had spent time around the couple. And she actually ended up getting pregnant okay. with Jimmy's child. But she told him about it. This was a very different chapter in her life, actually. She was very happy with him. Everyone says this was actually a very healthy relationship, way different than Darren. Which she, I forgot to say, like... First off, this relationship with Darren started when they were in high school. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. 18 years or whatever. Yeah. Another. So 
have we ever found out why she kept the two first children so that's, a secret? That was the first two children a secret. I'm not sure, but she kept them. Um, I don't know. This, I'm guessing, has to do with her mental health issues. I'm not sure. Yeah. I like mean, I said, she's always been very private. This could just be a weird thing or maybe she didn't want attention. I'm not sure. But this was prior to her drug use. So I'm wondering if that plays any anything into this whole right like it's just, it is it's weird already that right logical bat, part too. of her brain is still kind of around before the drugs take over well or the ill because then they part, start because she's choosing to keep the child a secret no i, no, I mean, I it's mean not they're so all secret, illogical right? no, no, no. that i just mean logical them. in the sense that she's like i'll keep i'm it. gonna keep yeah it. right yeah, yeah and so i guess the only logical part of giving childbirth the part of keeping the child is still around and then maybe she loses that in the beginning because of drugs and yeah fear of not being able to support it or whatever. right but yeah i it, that still baffles me from the very beginning is your first two children that you chose to keep they just showed up and darren's like oh what yeah so he oh, okay. was right you in know? drugs this entire time she wasn't until yeah. this third baby yeah and then in between all of those babies was that third kid that she had to keep Right, yeah, yeah. yeah, because people yep. noticed. So, like I said, she ended up getting pregnant with Jimmy's child, and she told him about it, and both of them were actually very excited. They told the family, the whole ordeal, so very different than her pregnancies with Darren. They seemed excited, but unfortunately, the baby miscarried. If this was really the case, we may never know, but this is what she claims to this day happened. After Megan's lengthy and disgusting interview with the police, she's taken to jail where she awaits a trial that I'm sure will be a fucking show. Megan heads to court where she faces charges for six counts of murder. Initially, she wanted to plead not guilty, but her lawyer was able to point out that they did not have a defense at all. She was at risk for the death penalty, but when she decided to plead guilty, her charges were reduced to the max sentence which is 30 years to life. Everyone was very sure that Megan won't be released, though. In I sure hope not. I know. In court, one of Megan's main arguments in her defense was that she didn't want her kids to have a bad life. She was afraid she couldn't provide for them properly due to being on drugs and money issues. The prosecution and judge pointed out that she did have options besides murder, in Utah, there is a safe haven law, which means you can drop off a baby at any hospital with no questions asked, completely anonymous, and the hospital will find a good home or an agency for the baby. I put in here that I didn't know this was a law. I thought every state had this. Like, I've always heard, like, you can drop off a baby at a firehouse. You know what I mean? Like, that's okay. always that's always been a joke that, um. like... I should have dropped you off at the firehouse kind of thing like my mom always said. That. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I thought that was like everything. No? I thought that was like every single state did that. Mm. I didn't know this was a law. I thought you could just drop... Because if you drop it off, they don't know who it is. So how can you be punished? What is this whole thing like? Well, if you drop it off, you won't be persecuted. Well, yeah. Because I don't know whose fucking baby this is, so I'm just going to take it okay, and find it at home. If if you drop off a baby at a firehouse or... Because I, I don't know what the law is here in Washington, but say there's... We're it's very illegal. liberal here. I'm I sure know, we could do say, anything. Say it's illegal to do that, or okay. not a lot that you can. If you're dropping off your own child, you're abandoning it. Right. You're, that's child endangerment. That's illegal. Like, right. So they're saying it's okay did, to do but what I'm saying is that how to does... To do it anonymously. If, if you're in a state that doesn't allow that, you can't just anonymously do it. People are going to stop you and ask you who you are and who this child is. No, that's... No, no, no. What if it's in the cover of darkness? I can't be prosecuted. Right, they that's don't know different. It's me. I think that's, that's different. That's what I'm talking... I don't think that's different no, at all. I think this safe haven law sounds more like you can just, in the middle of broad daylight, go oh, bring like it to protected. the hospital. Oh, like you're protected. Okay, okay. Like you're not going to be like... They're not going to say, what are you doing? Why are you right. just leaving this child here? Versus doing the exact same thing under the cover of darkness and still yeah, getting secretively. away with it. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, like you're saying, you could just drop him off at like the, the porch of the, yeah. the chief of police and he'll make sure it gets to a safe place. Or yeah. Like, but also, I guess, too, you have to think about like, what if there's people that already knew you had a baby? 
Yeah. You know, and they could tell on you, like, I haven't seen this baby in a while. Where'd I go or whatever? True. Yeah. Um, a huge part of this story is the drug addiction Megan had. Prosecutors in the defense each touched on this issue and how it may have played a part in her decision making over the years. However, the studies show in cases where parents are on meth or similar drugs, the death of the baby or the child is perpetrated in a very quick and hasty manner. It's usually a snap judgment or a decision due to the drugs. Megan's case was not like this, though, at all. Year after year, she made a cold and calculated decision, and each time she did it, it was a slow death. The process was slow and thought out. She found something that worked and decided to keep doing it. In court, Megan's daughters all read letters defending their mother, who they claim to be a good mom, and they stand by her to this day. Megan's own mother also read a statement saying, quote, The Megan who harmed those babies was not my Megan, end quote. Megan is currently serving her, hopefully, life sentence in the Utah State Prison. The only thing I'll say about that is if she said they were all stillborn. Which she didn't. No, I know. She said just two of them were or something. Just one, yeah. Or just one. I would understand if you are family. Well, I understand why family chooses to, like, stand by the side of family. Right. I guess. But uh, if she said they were all stillborn... You could you could go back and be like, she, she's never told anybody about pregnancies. She's always just given birth to the children on her own private terms, and that's how she lived her life, you know? Right. And she chose to, like, what if you lived in a cabin off-grid? Yeah. What would you do, you know? And if they were stillborn, then what would you, would you turn yourself into the police and be like, I just had a stillborn birth? Or would you quote-unquote dispose of it you know right but because she's saying only one of them were stillborn and the other six she chose to purposefully murder as her alive children yeah then you got different situations going right on. and she easily could have lied and said you know that they were all stillborn yeah or right. most of them whatever yeah, but the fact that she's not lying about that she's being yeah. honest that no i did kill these other six yeah you can't, even as a family member, you can't deny the fact that that's fucked up. And No, and know? that's at least what I was getting from the articles was that they're not saying she didn't do it. They're just saying she's a good person. Right. And that this was just some weird Thing stretch she did of terrible through. decisions. And she was on drugs and, you know, yada, Which, yada, hey, yada. Again, I can't even, you know... I can't say she's not a good person outside of these situations. Yeah. But these existed. Yeah. So you're, in my eyes, not a good person. Yeah, no, no, of course. And I think, you know, who knows back then, maybe she really thought there was no choice. Yeah. She really thought that. I mean, she could have easily been like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm broke. Like, I don't know. It does seem probably to her a lot easier and to some people, a lot easier than going out and going to a foster home and putting up for adoption. Like, mm-hmm. to a quote unquote normal person, that's what you would do. Right. Because would, at that point, those necessary steps, it may seem like a lot of work, but that's what, like, morally, you, when you're like a good, mentally stable person, there is no other option than doing that long route of getting it to a good home. Right. There's there is no murder option. That's not even something that pops into your no. brain, even though it's the quote unquote easiest route. That doesn't even Yeah, obviously you know, something is wrong. Yeah, there. of course. Yeah, yeah, something. And you know, like I said, her mental health issues go back so far and yeah, then you, and you can put always, fucking meth on top of that. Yep. When you go back to, you know, the time of all this happening too, and you add in you know, this is not me trying to make excuses or reasons why it would be okay for her. Or it's just, you know, you kind of wonder how you get to this decision that this is what you're going to do. Yeah. And, I mean, if you do let people know you're pregnant and right. then you have to explain why you don't still have the child. Yeah. If there's, like, additional guilt or... Um, uh, explanation that's involved when... Pe- people know you gave 
birth, but you don't have a child anymore. Yeah. You know, you're having to constantly explain why you don't have it or True. why it was your decision to right. put it up for adoption. Maybe and she's like, I just don't want to ever deal with that. Also, too, who knows? Um, not to like sound like I'm stereotyping, but if she's in Utah, who knows if she was like around like yeah, the religious. Mormon? Yep. Like, who knows? Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, I would still say, and I'm gonna deem her piece of shit. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, but also, this like, is this... kind of kudos to her for coming out a little bit. Like, she gets, like, half of a kudo for, like, coming out and just, like, not wasting anybody's fucking time about lying and all these runaround stories. Yeah. Like, at least she fucking spilled her guts, even yeah. though they're, like, terrible guts. Like, at least she sat there and said, you know. Owned up to it. Yeah. And, and again, it and doesn't sound like she's if... making excuses. Like, yeah. She's not making uh it doesn't sound like she's making any claim to be like, I shouldn't go to jail for this. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Word. She's like, well, yeah. Yeah, you, you finally caught me kind of type yeah. of deal. And, and it almost sounds like she's trying to like self-diagnose a little bit. Like, I probably did this because X, Y, Z, you know, kind of thing. Like, I don't know. Like, I just knew that at that time I could not afford this. And it was, this was not going to make my life any better or easier. Like, there's no way I could have provided for this kid. I was barely already providing yeah. for the two I had. And just mental. Ill. There's some right. sort of mental on us. If you're, yeah. if you're hiding a birth. Yeah. If you're hiding a pregnancy and then giving birth without anybody knowing. Right. And you did it twice before you're 20 years old. Yeah, I was like, going to say. And then you've got how many issues. more times. Yeah. Like, it, even if it stopped there, yeah. if Darren was just like, yeah, you, you know, she yeah. just showed up with these kids one day and I was like, oh, I guess they're mine. Yeah. And also, who knows? Like, it's just, what are the chances that Darren, like, I don't know, wasn't abusive a little bit or I don't know, like, like what I, are the chances that you're like a meth fueled man and like you aren't somewhat aggressive or like. Here's the, and maybe know. people are like screaming at their radio or in their headphones right now because <laughs> it's kind of bypassing the fact that so you know from the beginning they got gifted a house by darren's parents yeah and darren was kind of a drug induced person and so yeah that's why he quote unquote never noticed that she was pregnant with the first two children or really at all yeah what about these parents that are so involved enough in their you know children and in-laws lives to give them a house but then not involved enough to ever notice that a child just appeared out of nowhere yeah I and mean, then a second grandchild like uh, uh there's i don't feel like there's any explanation or how long ago this was what 25 30 years ago like in the 90s right 96 yeah to 2006 Okay, yeah, so yeah. basically 25 to 30 years ago. Yeah. You're telling me the grandma of the children that are all in support of their mother being a good person, the grandma was never like, remember those like two children you just showed up with out of nowhere? Okay, so what? also not trying to make excuses, but if we don't know the dynamics, like my family – and yours too sometimes are people that go a long period without seeing each other. Right. I'm not saying eight, nine months, right? But no. you co you combo the sporadic visits with with baggy clothing, her being but, already very small, right? Yeah, she I could, could see make how the someone argument. Could get away she with could it. make the argument just for those, even just those first two, because that's all anybody knew about. Was that oh, I didn't even notice. Like she could for two babies, she could just for two, not the whole seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I could see two pregnancies at three. Maybe I draw the line. How did you not fucking know about three? But two, maybe being like, oh, I didn't even notice. I just thought I ate a lot of pizza that day or yeah, whatever. No, I, I get that part. But as a as if I'm in our, in our future, if I, I, you know, God forbid, we're lucky enough to be able to gift our children a house or our if we have a son him and his, our daughter-in-law, a house, right? Because that's what Darren's... Did you say God forbid if we're lucky enough? Whatever, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Should, forbid should that we, we're rich as hell. Should we ever forbid be that. lucky enough <laughs> to be, be able to, <laughs> <laughs> to gift our children right. and children-in-law a house? Yeah. I would be involved in, I would 
dem- not demand. <laughs> I would like to feel the respect that if they were pregnant with a child and and gave birth to a child in the house that we gave them, that they would at least tell us. They did after it was born. After yeah, and yeah, I'd be you like, just said remember that you gave birth how you were a piece of shit, uh, you know pregnant person that didn't tell anybody including the person that gave you a house that you were you're pregnant you're talking about in a perfect world you're not talking about no, a no, mentally no, no, no. unstable woman no, the, the mentally unstable she's woman she's already is the, secretive as hell but i'm saying the mother of darren oh are you also mentally unstable if you're just like cool with your daughter-in-law having children without ever telling you she what? was pregnant bro what else are, it's already bored no, what I do you know, want her but, to do but, what are you gonna but now here we are out? 25 years later and they're like yeah she's such a good person i'm like i can't forget the first four years where this you hid these pregnancies this from me <laughs> this isn't her in-law saying this this is her mom saying this darren's parents are the ones that gave him the house Oh, okay. All yeah, right. Megan's mom is the one that's like, this is the best I'd woman ever or whatever. Like, yeah, no, okay. it's still weird. You're right. Yeah, I'm sorry. If no. if your mom, if we had a yeah. child and your mom never knew about it until it would arrived. But I feel like, like how easy, fuck? <laughs> I agree she would have questions and let's just even just say this was a friend of ours or something. It doesn't have to be from a parental point of view. If a friend of ours had a baby, I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, that's crazy, but I would not be upset. I would not be like, how could you not tell me? How could you hide this no, from me? No, but maybe after the second one being like, is this your thing? <laughs> Where you hide pregnancies? <laughs> I don't and then, listen. And then, honestly, after two of them, then I might be like, no, is she I agree. pregnant again? I agree. Two, like, I feel like is Anytime she where called I... you, I'd be like, let me guess, she had another time. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, two, I feel like is right. That's where you like are like, that's even two, right, is pushing it. How do you not know? Women's bodies just know. But we've heard of this before. We have heard of this before where females really honestly just don't know. Sometimes they just weight fluctuates and they might miss their period or whatever. Or like, I don't know. Like, it happens. It happens. Right. Okay. <laughs> Twice in a row. And then, oops. <laughs> She's a great mom, Let's just though. Move on from She's this. the best mom. Anyway, of all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's the story of Megan Huntsman. She's oh still serving gosh. time in the Utah State Prison. Yeah, I remember. I actually, I don't remember the first time hearing this case, and I mentioned like I think ten minutes into the case, I said it's starting to hit me because I realized what the case was. Oh, okay. And as soon I thought as you, you meant said, like you're starting to understand. What's happening oh, here? Oh, oh, no, Meaning no, no. there's a bunch like, of dead yeah, babies. Yeah, because obviously, I mean, the, the lead up to discovering that first child. Have you seen her picture? I, I'm i sure I have. You I keep can. talking and I'll find right. it for you. I, I don't remember the first time. And I again, the names, they're, they're tough to recall all the time. But the story right. of the, the woman who just had seven, you know. This is her famous picture. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry for all of you, uh, actually all of you, because Don't worry, we're there's no YouTube uh, version of this episode. I'll post it on Instagram. She, okay. But I mean, look, and then like here, she's normal. But yeah. I, you can kind of tell maybe in this one, she's very thin. Like she's thin. Yeah. And, and again, I can, looking at her, I could see how you could go through an entire pregnancy and nobody noticed yeah pregnancy. and some i even people... understand that for people that are tiny tiny and like yeah you would think like oh a big bump would definitely show right but i can't get over the fact that grandparents especially grandparents that gave people a house aren't like up in arms about the fact that two grandchildren were birthed and yeah, nobody knew so, they were why are you so spicy about that <laughs> i'm not you're like guess, really gung-ho no, on that like how dare i give you a house you not tell me no, when you're knocked there, up there was a miscommunication because i thought it was uh the the grandma that gave them the house i was like you know she's really it, a great person you know, oh. you're, you're explaining that it's actually oh. her actual mom yeah it's just it, i'm i'm going back to where like where could this have ever been caught stopped prevented and yeah you can't say ever when someone's doing something secretly you can't say well, that right you that's what i was known, gonna say you know. but also too who knows if she let's just say that she had right her two daughters 
and then maybe she killed the first one uh, you, you know what i mean the first so so the third one whatever right. yeah, yeah. yeah the first of the ones to be murdered was the third one then say she f- keeps the fourth one because people like notice and try to stop it like how would they even stop it they would just notice she's pregnant say oh you're pregnant that's why she kept that one kid that last of her right, three cause daughters because people notice yeah, yeah. so they wouldn't know what they were stopping. No, I don't. They would just I notice know. she's pregnant, point it out. Who knows if she would have killed in between all of these? She would have had two kids, kill one of them, have yeah, another I mean, kid, and kill that two. Is, you know, that is the challenge of, not the challenge, but that is where it's just the weird the secrecy of it. Yeah. But from the very, not from the very beginning, but when you go back to the fact that the first two children who were born and known about were never known about during the entire pregnancy. That would just raise questions as, is she doing okay? Right, yeah, yeah, that's what you, you know. mean. Yeah. yeah. Like, and from then, that like, point... We, somebody should probably keep an eye on her. Yeah. Because that's not normal to just... Especially, even Darren... I feel like even a, a meth-headed, drug fuel dude would be like, something's not right here. <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm a dad. <laughs> like, And then all of a sudden, I've got a second child. Okay. <laughs> Darren Jr. <laughs> Who's a girl? I don't. Yeah, <laughs> They're all I, daughters, but okay. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It just, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. And Let's it's, just... it's unfortunate that um, it wasn't caught sooner, I suppose. Yeah, you know? like her mental health and issues. Again, there is, there's so many things about the case that so many women and couples and families around the world would love to have the ability to just give birth the Dude. ability to give birth on your own yeah without having to pay for hospital bills okay so take that out of it i was like that part too right like okay good for you you didn't bleed out everywhere like there's that's what i'm talking about where that girl no in the midwife video, or anything that girl no. in the video was like how the fuck did you do this yeah. seven times so there's some people that think that she had help but i'm like i don't think she had help but i don't know but If anything, I'm like, I would, you know how many people would pray to be that fertile? I was going to say, to (laughs) get pregnant seven times in 10 years. She is just like ovulating every day of her life. Like who even can get pregnant that much? That's outstanding. Yeah. Like the second she pushed one out, she was ready to go again. Like amazing. You would think that after. That is a fucking gift. you, You would think. Not to her, obviously, but. And I don't know how dangerous or um taboo uh what am i thinking of Hmm. birth control was back in the 90s oh right but you would think that if after the first one well who knows if they could even afford it too they were very exactly i don't know what the uh you uh, think women's rights are bad now like yeah i don't i don't know what the uh, you think Darren fucking out. is like taking time? His crackhead is like, yeah, let me put on a condom real quick. Like, no, they probably think also we're married. Fuck it, you know. Right, I kind of get that. The specifics but. of getting birth control, I don't know, yeah. but I know that if you and don't Utah, want to be a child or a parent to more children, yeah, there's ways to go about it. Obviously, yeah, and you can't always after prevent it. Killing but the first one, like, right. I'd be like, I don't ever, but again, I don't have a mental issue or none that I'm diagnosed <laughs> with yet. Also but, too, right? Drugs. I mean, that's the biggest thing here. Drugs. Yeah, but that doesn't, drugs <laughs> had nothing to do with hiding two birds in the first place. That's where it's like, it, oh you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. No, that part I get what and you're so saying. That but is a very the whole clear part, sign that something's wrong with the it. The whole like common sense part, be like, I would like to avoid this problem next time. Yeah. Because the other two she kept, right? She was like, I'm going to keep it a secret, but I'm still going to keep it. Yep. Then is that's when, the, that's when the drug part kicks in, right? <laughs> yes. Instead I, of someone being like, wow, I'd love to avoid murdering another baby. How about I get on birth control or do anything else to prevent this? She just decided. She, she wasn't on drugs for that first one, was she? Yeah, the first. No, 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 not the first two. The first I'm one saying she the first was. One that yes. she killed. Yes. Okay. All right. Yep. And so, so her I can third. see that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yep. Once By the you, way, once you've done it a couple of times, you grow accustomed to yeah. it. Yeah. And you're she probably like, thinks I can problem solved. Yeah. 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 Um. By the way, too, something else that came up, um, I saw in like some forums and stuff, as people were asking if that 
third random daughter that survived was like okay yeah because she was born during like a drug era and actually turned out that she had no health issues interesting yeah like her doing say, meth sure the entire time quote unquote addicted yeah at birth, so. also too like can we just point out like what it's got to be like to be that girl that third daughter that should have been a dead baby yeah like growing up now well, that's like what the fuck being like yo i was supposed to be in one of those boxes isn't to, that crazy to, to lighten up the mood to oh, end boy. this conversation okay, okay. Uh, andrew schultz comedian yes love and him. he has a, a bit on ted bundy about how you know he's the greatest serial killer ever or whatever because um you mean he's the hottest one or whatever say, what people were saying along those lines yeah 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 because there is a story and maybe this is true or not true but stories about women that were with him that he didn't end up killing right and so his bit is like you know i'm so good that he couldn't kill me or something like that oh yes and so then living your life after that being the girl who survived ted bundy because you know, you have the golden vagina, whatever you want to call <laughs> he it. He didn't want to kill you yes. because he wanted to keep doing uh, you. The confidence you would live the rest of your <laughs> oh life with God. knowing that. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's a way lighter note. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we ended anyway. on that. How did we go oh. from dead infants to Ted Bundy fucking You were saying people? about, you were, ta- like- you were talking about the, uh, the one daughter that who lived, you know, and has to live, now live with the fact that she was probably not supposed to be alive still yep totally the same anyway guys anyway thanks for that <laughs> well thank you for that um which always yeah, feels weird to is, say right i don't know if that's that just me. is just one of those one of those stories and again i think to wrap it up like it's i'm happy to know that she uh how, what would you say is owning up to it and yeah not i guess i mean excuses. i'm i'm hoping that there's some kind of fucking like mental program for yeah. her or something like i hope they're not just putting her in there and like i'm not saying she didn't do anything wrong but it clearly it was steered by something in her that yeah. was off balance and just completely fucked up all right well um i guess that'll do it <laughs> uh thank you for that um again that's one of those episodes that's just you know you're not gonna forget it in one yep. of those cases you're not gonna forget yep. so you doing okay over there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I yeah. hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make, make sure you you leave a rating on Spotify and and go ahead and go over to Apple Podcasts, leave a rating, leave a review everywhere, everywhere, and follow us on Instagram at True Crime Banter. And I think that's it. I think that'll do it for this episode. So thank you, and uh, we will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Adios.